closer to Jesus or not. And what you want to do is balance and say, okay, God, I, I, I'm healthy enough. I'm prayed up enough. I have enough other strong wheat around me that I can be in these weeds and reflect the light and make a difference and make a change. You can work through me transforming my environment. But sometimes you got to change your playmates and change your playground. And the third one is this. How are you being transformed by God's heart? This kind of goes back to last week. Your heart matters and God can transform your heart. And how do I know I'm not making this stuff up? This is all from the Bible. We're gonna, we're gonna close today by looking at two por different portions of scripture, one from Old Testament, one from New Testament. We talk about God's heart and your environment, your heart in that environment. How can you transform it? We're gonna go to the, to the book of Ezekiel. How many of you have been reading Ezekiel lately? Of course, who gets into Ezekiel? It's one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. You got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. I'm telling you, if, if you want to read some bizarre stuff, Ezekiel is far out there. It's some really cool stuff. So Ezekiel, he lived about 600 years before Jesus. Ezekiel, he did not live in an environment that he would have chosen. The Babylonian captivity had happened taken off, he's in Babylon, like modern America. <laughs> he's living in a place that's foreign to the, the, the culture that he knew. There are so many weeds around there. There's very few wheat left, just a small portion, and they're in slavery. And Ezekiel starts to prophesy. And that means he's giving not just judgment, but hope to the people that find themselves in a place that's very foreign, and the thinking is different. The media, the social media, the leaders, the teachings, you name it. It's different than what you would expect and what you'd want. And here is what God says through Ezekiel. And I believe he's speaking this straight to us today. He says, therefore say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Although I sent them far away among the nations, scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries they have gone. Listen to that. No matter what environment you find yourselves in, God says, I have been a sanctuary for them in that country. You may be in an environment, you're like, I'm stuck here. I have to finish working here for two years. God can be your sanctuary in that environment. And he goes on, he has more good news. He says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from their heart the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. I don't want to jump back to last week's sermon, but I have to a little bit on this because he talked about in your environment having either a heart of stone or heart of flesh. How many of you need that heart chiseled a little bit? How many of you are angry right now? Rightly so. You're seeing so many lies out there. Rightly so. Every day you wake up, you're like, this is not the environment I signed up for, Jesus. Just like the disciples, huh? Just like the Israelites 600 years before Jesus, huh? And you know what God says? I can do that. I can work with that. You hang in that environment. You listen to me. You, you seek me. And I will change that that, that wants to be so hard-hearted. And I will soften that heart and I will work through you. I will change your environment. And it gets even better in the New Testament. Go to 2 Peter. Now, the dude's name is Peter. Peter was actually in that house when our parable was spoken. And the context is this. People are saying, hey, when's Jesus coming back? It's been about 35 years. When is he coming back? If they only knew how long it'd be. Yeah, 35 years, and they're like, come on now. And Peter is, is letting them know, hey, we got things totally different than you do. But I want you to know God's heart when it talks about the environment and people in our environment. He says this, the Lord, he's not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but here it is, everyone to come to repentance. It is not my job to pull up the weeds, to judge the weeds. It is my job in the environment I find my in to speak the truth, 
to let any weed that's around me say, I'm a wheat, I'm proud to be wheat. Look at all these little things that are gonna blow off me when the wind comes and make more seeds and more weeds, however it works. And I'm so excited to let you know that there is still a God that loves us that can soften our hearts. There is a God that can unite us instead of divide us. There is a God who loves us and his name is Jesus. He has a much more beautiful environment for you than what you're in now because I've been there. I've tested some of those environments and it isn't nice. So today, as we sum this up, just think about this. Your environment that you're in right now may not be a mistake. It may be where God has you. Your environment may be in a place where you pray about it and you're like, you know what, Lord, I think it's time to move to a different direction. Or just maybe God has you like in that family or some with that one person right there where God is saying, my cross can change this weed into wheat. And at the end times, I won't just gather you but I can gather that man or woman as well. And God, thank you that your heart is for that and you're for me. Amen. If you would like to respond to God's beautiful word and the goodness that and the love he has for you, we're gonna have an opportunity to profess our faith in God, the Father, Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand and profess with me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we pray together as a group, I'd want to give you the opportunity in person or if you're online, if you have a specific prayer request, you could text PRAY to 833-440-0137. You can do that anonymously, but if you want a prayer partner, to call you back with, and I'll, I'll assign them probably in the next 24 hours. You get someone to call you and they can pray specifically with you. That's a blessing that you don't wanna, wanna pass up. So give you that opportunity if you'd like. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are in the business of transforming our lives. Thank you that you speak, Lord, to us in parables, ways that we can simply uh, get a grasp, Lord, on your eternal truths and your love and your grace to us. God, there may be some hard choices that we need to make right now. There might be environments, Lord, that we, we need to move from and others we need to get into. God, only you know uh, what you're doing and how you're doing it and what the timing is on that. So we come to you now and we humbly ask that you would give us wisdom, Lord, that you would give us your grace uh, to, to know, Lord, uh, when is the time and what to do. But most importantly, God, we pray that you would continue, Lord, to just pour your transformation into our hearts as we live in the world we live in. We pray, God, that your, your transformation would happen in the environment we live in in this country, that all the division, Lord, would just turn and that people would repent and come to you like they never have before. This would be a turning point in our nation, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that you are bringing healing to us physically and, and we ask that that would just continue. And that as you heal, Lord, through medicines, doctors, and nurses, Lord, that all glory would go to you because you love us so much and you heal. God, we have so many other things on our hearts and minds and we, we don't even know how to say them sometimes, but we lift them up to you in the prayer that your Savior Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.